Hey, good morning. Welcome to Exodus 31. And today, just one verse, verse 18. We've had five chapters, six chapters of uh, this is how you do the sanctuary, this, 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 this. This is how you make this, 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 and this. Now let's read verse 18. Everything's kind of summed up here. We just talked about the Sabbath for a couple of mornings, and now uh, there's a summation. And here it is. When he had finished speaking with him upon Mount Sinai, he gave Moses the two tablets of the testimony, tablets of stone written by the finger of God. So friends, maybe you didn't realize it, or perhaps you perhaps you did. I know there's a lot of smart and careful Bible students out there. But what we've been looking at all the way for several chapters, this is indeed taken from when Moses was alone on the mountain with God. Remember how he disappears and they're going to make the golden calf? And that's the next chapter. That's starting tomorrow morning. We'll look at that. But he's been up there for a long time and the people have lost track of him and they're kind of worried we got to do something else. Well, they don't, but that's where they are. But anyway, everything we've looked at in, in chapter 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, and now up here to 31 um, and from 25, this has been Moses and God alone on the mountain. We have this because God inspired Moses to write it out. This is private conversations between God and Moses, but delivered to us because God wants us to have it. So all that we've seen is that thing. Now, maybe you doubt this, but go back to um, Exodus 24, verse 12. Now the Lord said to Moses, come up to me on the mountain and remain there, and I will give you the stone tablets with the law and the commandment, which I have written for their instruction. So there we have it there. That's the beginning of this stretch and Moses complies, and then we have these many chapters all the way out here to chapter, through the end of 31, then we're gonna start 32. So this has all been Moses on the mountain. There's 10 commandments, right? Now, all other laws, they're all important. Everything that God has, has shown us about the sanctuary, it's all important, they're not to be ignored. But the 10 words, the 10 commandments, given there in Exodus 20, they are so important, they are so foundational that they have the status of a personal divine endorsement all that's all their own. And these are really important. That's why we get this emphasis. We just had these last couple of mornings about the seventh day Sabbath. And we're going to get it again. We had it in Exodus 16. Then we had the Sabbath in Exodus 20. We've got the Sabbath right here in 31. We're going to get the Sabbath again in 35. And the Sabbath is sprinkled all over the book of Exodus. It's, it is it is. Preeminent. So I guess I've said that many times, so I won't keep saying it. Now, let me share one other thing here that uh, you might have never heard before, but let's let's hear me out. Okay, fair enough. This is uh, Stewart's commentary, page 656, and uh, you might be surprised, but let me read it to you or roughly read it to you. The first place in the narrative where the number of tablets of stone is given is right here in verse 18. And how many stone tablets are there given for God's law? Two right? And I'll bet you that you've seen that picture. Haven't you all seen that picture with four commandments on the first one and six on the other, or sometimes they have five on one and five on the other. And, uh, but <laughs> uh, those pictures, maybe those pictures are wrong. Let me read the rest of what Stuart says. The full text of the 10 words slash commandments was written on each tablet one copy being God's and one copy being Israel's. This reflects the standard ancient Eastern treaty covenant practice of providing a copy of the covenant both to the vassal and to the sovereign. So see, whenever there was an agreement between the, the vassal, the, the king, the leader, and then there was a sovereign, an under king, somebody who submits to him and repays taxes to him and says, okay, I'll fight your wars as you, and I submit to you, okay? Whenever there was any kind of an agreement like that between the, the higher one and the lower one, there would be two copies, which makes perfect sense. Like if you enter, enter in an agreement with somebody about something today, like if you buy a car or something, guess what? You're going to get a photocopy contract of the sale thing. And I guarantee you they're keeping on their file a contract, a, a copy of that contract as well. So if there's any question that comes up at some point about, you know, what the agreement was about, Boom, their lawyers have all got it, right? So this is the way it was done thousands of years ago. Just no photocopiers. So here you have two tablets, and each one would have the Ten Commandments written all over it, the tablet. 
And what just happened was that over time that they are kept together, both tablets are kept here because God, God has a perfect record. He doesn't need to keep a stone copy. Uh, the fact that, the, finishing the comment from Stuart, the fact that the two tablets were eventually placed together in the ark further symbolizes the ark's role as a point of contact for God and, and his people. So there you have it. Interesting thought you might not have ever thought before. The Ten Commandments, two tablets, and perhaps all the commandments written on one and all the commandments written on the other. And so you'd have uh, maybe front and back, maybe four on the front and six on the back, and then four on the front and six on the back. And then when you see those pictures, you can reconcile those uh, mentally by winking to yourself and saying, one of these is facing uh, the, this front side and one's facing, and we're just looking at the back on the second duplicate set. <laughs> so anyway, I throw that to you. You might have never ever heard of such a thing before. But it's all summed up here now. Ten Commandments is foundational, and it's summed up the covenant, the Sabbath, and so on. The sanctuary house is going to be built. And now there's a giant interruption, chapter 32, and I guess we'll have to talk about that tomorrow, though. See you tomorrow morning, and something very sad and remarkable is going to happen. Uh, something that's totally... Well, well, let's talk about it tomorrow morning. See you then. Hey, if you're learning, uh, and if you're getting actual scripture insights that are being a spiritual help to you, you know, I never mention this, you know, about the YouTube algorithm. Don't you get tired of these people that put up a sign and they, they always start their thing and they say, subscribe to me and it'll help more people see the video. Uh, put a like on this and it'll help more people see the video. The YouTube algorithm, da, 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 da. Well, as far as I know, that's all more or less true. So if you think these are uh, these little devotional videos are valuable, that they're useful, subscribe and uh, and put a like on there and and perhaps YouTube will say, hey, more people like that stuff. Let's give them more, let's give them more Bible stuff. And so anyway, I just make that suggestion to you. I'll probably make it once a year or so. <laughs> so I don't worry, I'm not gonna go on and on and on that way. So here we go. Did it, done it, I'll leave it up to you. You know what you feel like doing and what you're led to do.